This is Mr. Richman, and this is your Integrated Math 2 Unit 7.3 Lesson Summary. In Unit 7.3, we take a look at two more quadrilaterals that exist, kites and trapezoids. Um, and through some construction, which by the way, you should know for the test, you will possibly be doing some constructions on there, um, as well as some proofs in the book, uh, we come up with some properties involving these two shapes. So let's start with the definition of a kite. A kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So what that means is the side touching it. So at least one of the sides touching it will be congruent to it, and then you're going to have two other consecutive sides that will be congruent. So you, you end up with two pairs of differently congruent sides. Um, and the other rule is that opposite sides are not congruent. So if you have one side here, the side opposite it cannot be congruent. I have a side here, side opposite it cannot be congruent. The rule must be in place for it to be considered a kite. Now, some extra rules with kites involving the diagonals. Um, one, one thing is one pair of opposite angles of a kite is congruent. So that is true. One pair of opposite angles of a kite is congruent. The diagonals are always perpendicular, and that's kind of an easier one to remember with all the shapes because if you've ever seen a kite or made a kite, that's how you always start by making is you take two perpendicular sticks and then start uh, creating your kite around them. Um, and here's where it can get a little confusing to remember, but typically what I say is the longer diagonal that you have, because you're always going to have one diagonal that's longer than the other, um, the longer diagonal bisects the shorter diagonal. So your shorter diagonal should be split into two congruent parts. And the angles that your longer diagonal bisect or intersect create uh, congruent angles. So it, it does bisect here and create two congruent segments. So I always look for that longer diagonal to help me identify the little congruent segments and the opposite congruent angles. Hopefully that helps. Uh, moving into trapezoids. Properties of a trapezoid. Uh, first of all, the definition. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So we've dealt with a lot of shapes so far, a lot of quadrilaterals with two pairs of parallel sides. As soon as you have only one pair and exactly one pair, you are a trapezoid. So here's an example of a trapezoid. These two lines are parallel. Other two sides are not. That's all it takes. I have a trapezoid. Um, now with that, there can possibly be an isosceles trapezoid. If you take the one pair of parallel sides, again, those side lengths will be different, but as long as you make the opposite sides, the sides that are not parallel, the same length, you now have an isosceles trapezoid. Kind of like an isosceles triangle. If you took an isosceles triangle and just kind of cut it in half or cut a piece off of it, you would create this isosceles trapezoid. And there are a couple extra rules that come with that isosceles trapezoid. One, well, obviously these uh, non-parallel sides have to be congruent. But if that's the case, then the uh, base angles are going to be congruent. And I forgot to draw that on there for you, but also the diagonals will be congruent. So if I draw these diagonals, these diagonals are congruent to each other. Okay, and our last theorem or property that you should be aware of the trapezoid is if we draw a mid-segment. And a reminder for you real quick what a mid-segment is, is a segment connecting two midpoints on the shape. So if I find the midpoint of segment CA, put that point E, and I find the mid-segment of point uh, F that's on DB, the mid-segment DB, and I connect that, I've created a mid-segment. You did that with uh, some triangles. So the mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to each of the bases, and its length is one half the sum of the lengths of the bases. So this mid-segment will fall right in line with these other parallel bases, and lengthwise, it's going to be equal to one half the sum of the other lengths. So I kind of wrote it in a more of a formula form for you here. I would definitely write that one down. The mid-segment EF that I drew would equal one half of AB plus CD. Okay? With that said, let's see how we do. So also problems with this. So we'll do one for a kite and one for a trapezoid. So in the kite problem, what I decided to ask you was, Simple as this, what's the perimeter of the kite? Which you'll notice I only gave you some of the inside measures uh, of the kite. So what am I going to need to know to, to do this? Well, right off the bat, I need to know that these diagonals are perpendicular. That's huge. And again, even if I forgot that for the test, and I look, and man, those look awfully perpendicular, 
um, but you're not sure, make that assumption. It's better off to guess that and have it be wrong than leave it blank and leave yourself with no idea. So when I do that, it allows me to now solve this problem because I have some definite information. One, these are perpendicular, but I also know that these bisect here, which means this four inch left segment is also four inches over here. And so if I start to break this down, I see that this triangle is a right triangle with four and three, and this other triangle is the same. So if I can find this one length here, then I have two of the perimeter lengths that I'll need. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna do the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And I'll make A four and B three. Go ahead and, oops, go ahead and square those. Four squared is 16, three squared is nine. Add those together, you get 25. Take the square root of that, and you now have the value of C, my hypotenuse, and I have two of the lengths that I'm gonna need to find the perimeter. What I'm missing still now are these lengths, and those triangles definitely are not the same as the other two. They are right triangles because of the diagonals being perpendicular, but they definitely are a different length triangle. So I have one length here that's four, and they give me that this middle length is 10. So I need to do the Pythagorean theorem for that triangle, which, because the dimensions are the same, would give me the exact same dimensions for the triangle on the right, again solving for C to get the final lengths of the kite. So I'm gonna again do the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm gonna make A four, I'm gonna make B 10, and I'm gonna square those and add those together to get 116. I could write that as a simplified square root, but I would imagine since we're doing perimeter at this point, most of your teachers are just gonna want you to round that square root to a decimal. So we'll get that for us now. I'm getting 10.77. We'll go ahead and leave it as 10.77. Then, so I now know that these two lengths here are 10.77, and perimeter is the distance around a shape, so I have all the outside lengths now, and I don't use those inside lengths for perimeter. I can just add those together, and I will know my perimeter, 10.77 plus 10.77 plus five plus five. Add those together real quick times two plus 10 more is 31.54. And anytime I'm talking about a length, I need to use the correct units, or an area use the correct units. Units are in inches. Perimeter is a length unit, so no unit squared, it's just first dimensional units. So 31.54 inches. All right, moving on to trapezoid. Here, I am given a trapezoid. You'll notice I know it's a trapezoid even though I didn't say it was because I have one set of parallel sides, one set of non-parallel sides. And I know that AB here is a mid-segment because it's splitting this into a congruent pair and this into a congruent pair, so I know that these are on the midpoints. So I can actually use mid-segment rules possibly in this. So let's look at the info they give us. WX equals 12. I'm always marking everything anyone ever gives me. If they don't give me a picture, I'm drawing a picture. Pictures are fantastic for geometry, guys. Absolute necessity. A, B is 18, and C, Y is what I'm looking for. So, let's start with some things we know. I, I'm missing the bottom base. It'd be nice to have that and to find it. So, what I'm gonna do is the only formula, I really know this is that mid-segment uh, formula for that length. And if I recall correctly, the mid-segment then, in this is A, B, is supposed to be equal to 1 half the bases added together. The bases are WX and ZY. So that's the only formula I really have to work off of this for mid-segment, and we're gonna plug in what we have. So they do give me AB, so I'm gonna change that AB to an 18, 
and they give me WX is 12, so I can plug that, and ZY is my unknown. That's what I'm going to solve for, so I'm going to leave that ZY. So now I have an equation to solve, and there's a couple ways you can handle this from algebra. Some of your algebra might be a little rusty, we haven't been doing it too, too much in here, but you could distribute the one half, and if you love fractions, which I doubt you do, um, you can do that. If you're not so much into the fraction thing, you can get rid of the one half right now by doing the opposite. The opposite of one half, or in other words, the opposite of dividing by two is to multiply by two. So I'm going to multiply both sides by two over one. Or just two, if you like to think of it that way. 18 times two is 36. When I do this here, two over one times one half, it's all going to cross out. So now I have nothing in front of my parentheses, which means I no longer even need those parentheses. I'm just left with that 12 plus zy. And now just like any other variable, I can solve by isolating. I want to get zy, so I get rid of the 12. I subtract 12 to both sides. 36 minus 12 is 24. And I've got my answer. ZY should equal 24. I should check my answer here real quick. Verify with the diagram. That mid-segment is supposed to equal half the sum of the bases. 24 plus 12 is 36. Half of 36 is 18. Everything's working out. It's a beautiful thing.